My parents uh, had invested in uh, the World Book Encyclopedia, which I loved, and the house was filled with books. And I was an avid reader from a very young age, and that was all a big part of my growing up, uh, was uh, getting knowledge, access to knowledge and information. And then later, my mother is a real uh, tech gadget aficionado, and so we were one of the first households to have a, a VCR, we were one of the first households to have a home computer. Uh, my uncle had a computer store, and it was the first computer store in town. <clears throat> and uh, so we had computers at home, and I was very interested in that, and uh, goofing around on the computer and learning to program and things like that. And this was really before uh, that sort of thing was common. Uh, so that was a big, a big deal uh, as part of my growing up. So we had uh, Commodore computers, Commodore PET, and then later my uncle, uh, we had uh, Radio Shack computers, and then uh, later Eagle computer, which is a very short-lived uh, brand of computer that, that was out just before the IBM PC came out. So it was that just before that big wave of personal computers uh, came. So, uh, you know, when we look at the number of people who are participating in the project, there's a few different ways we look at it. So there's about 70 to 80,000 people who make at least five edits a month. And so that's what we would call a basic active contributor. But of course, five edits a month is pretty small. It's just you, you occasionally come and do a little bit. There's a much smaller core of people, three to 5,000 people, uh, who really are the core community, the people who really run Wikipedia, who look over things, make sure everything is OK, do the bulk of the writing, and so forth. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a relatively small number of people if you think about uh, the you know, hundreds of millions of people read Wikipedia every month. Uh, and it's that three to 5,000 member community that's really at the heart of it. So on the other question, uh, when we look at the uh, statistics uh, for Wikipedia, we see that Wikipedia is very strong in all of the European languages, including English. We're really big in Chinese and Japanese. If we look a little deeper and say, well, what is the highest per capita readership of Wikipedia? Uh, and it really tends to be uh, the German-speaking countries. So Germany and Austria are very, very uh, into Wikipedia. Uh, Canada is also quite high. Um, but uh, you know, it's most places around the world. It's about one third of the internet uh, sees Wikipedia in a given month, which is a huge, huge number, obviously. Uh, but for me, it's a little bit of a funny number because it's uh, smaller than I would have thought, given you know how do you avoid coming on Wikipedia at least once in a month? And apparently, two thirds of the people in the world do that. So. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's a fantastic uh, and horrible time to be alive in many, many ways. And, uh, you can imagine uh, how I feel, given that I've devoted uh, the last, I would say, 16 years of my life uh, to the values of uh, neutrality and facts and resourced information, to suddenly live in a world where people are talking about that we live in a post-fact world, ah, I can't take it. So I remember back in the very, very early uh, days of Wikipedia, um, I was there um, at the very beginning. Uh, sometimes people ask me, what was the first article ever written in Wikipedia? And unfortunately, that's actually lost to history. Uh, in the early days, uh, we weren't, the, the software didn't support a proper database and proper backups. So in order to delete a page, I had to actually go on to the server and delete a file, which meant uh, some of the early records got lost. I do remember the first words of Wikipedia because I wrote them. Um, I, I installed the software and I typed hello world, which is if you're a programmer, a traditional thing you do when you learn a new language, you create a hello world program. So I wrote hello world, not really thinking about how philosophical that might be or how meaningful that might be in the future. And then, uh, you know, we, we grew for a little while. Uh, this was just a side project of mine. And I remember one Christmas, we had uh, three servers. 
and uh, on Christmas Day, two of the three servers crashed, uh, and nobody was around to reboot them, so I was online trying to frantically get the site running on one server, uh, and that was when I really decided, okay, I think it's time that we need to think about a business model. Um, of course, there was no business model back then. This was the dot-com crash era. Uh, and so we said, okay, let's, let's raise money. Let's ask the public if they will donate. And that first fundraiser uh, was something we really didn't know if it was going to work or not. I was hoping to raise $20,000 in uh, one month's time. And as it turned out, we raised nearly $30,000 in about two weeks' time. These days, obviously, Wikipedia is the fifth most visited website. Uh, it's the primary source of information for a great many people. Uh, and so we do have certain interactions with governments uh, based on that, ranging from uh, innocent interactions to things that I would consider to be not, uh, not good. Uh, so for example, we're completely blocked in China and in Turkey at the moment, and uh, the Turkey situation is evolving. We hope that will end soon, but it's hard to say. And, um, you know, in general, we, we have a, uh, a transparency report we put out every few months, uh, or maybe we put it out annually. Annually, I think there's some updates along the way. But, uh, and this shows very clearly all of the requests we've gotten from governments and how many of them that we acquiesce to and so forth, uh, which is essentially zero. Um, we, don't, we don't censor Wikipedia ever as a matter of principle. Let's bring everybody together nice and tight. And real fast, one, two, and three. Thank you, everybody. Wiki Tribune is a completely new project, so it's completely unaffiliated with Wikipedia. I'm launching it from scratch. Uh, we're currently we're based in London, uh, and the idea of Wiki Tribune is to bring together paid professional journalists and a community to do something new in the space of original reporting. So one of the key differences from Wikipedia, Wikipedia doesn't allow original research, or original reporting. Everything in Wikipedia should be cited to a third-party reliable source. But of course, there are many times when we want to know things that aren't already in the source, so we want to find out new information, and that's really where journalism is important, and journalism comes in. So we want to have a place where people can work together with the staff journalists doing original reporting, original news, and most importantly, we're doing it in a very wiki way, so it's very, very open. Uh, we're launching with no advertising, no paywalls. Uh, so I've been joking, a series of bad business decisions, but that's how I've built my career so far. Uh, and we really want to uh, strike the tone of neutrality, uh, really to try really hard to be very, very neutral, very fact-based. It's something I see missing in the current media landscape. There's really a lot of um, opinionated journalism out there. And in a sense, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think it, there should be a little bit less of it, but. Uh, but I think the public is hungering for something more neutral. In a traditional publication, uh, what you often find is that the editor-in-chief um, and the ownership, the management, really drive a particular agenda. And sometimes that's unapologetic, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you're a left-leaning or right-leaning newspaper and you're transparent about it, that's kind of okay, but it's not really what we want. What we want is for our community to really police the concept of neutrality. Uh, and by being able to come in and see, uh, if you see something that's biased or that overstates what's in evidence, uh, you can go in and tone that down. And you can do that directly in, in the very open participatory way, uh, like at Wikipedia. And that really does involve a strong commitment to having a healthy, strong community uh, from the beginning. You really want to encourage those values around neutrality as being a core uh, principle of operation. And then you have to constantly keep checking yourself. Uh, are we living up to what we want to be doing in that area? And it's an ongoing process. And there's really no magical answer here. Uh, I think we all know what an incredibly biased uh, newspaper looks like. And uh, we want to move in the other direction. And you never quite get there perfectly. Uh, you always have certain biases that you haven't noticed or that nobody's called you out on. Uh, hopefully, they're relatively minor. Uh, but you can really push to say, no, as, insofar as possible, we're going to try to be fair and we're going to try to be uh, very wide-ranging in our interests. For me, I actually don't care 
Well, I do a little bit, but I don't care how you vote, for example. I only care that you vote on the basis of knowledge, of information. If, if society debates things in a thoughtful and reasoned way and make policy choices that I don't agree with, okay, that's democracy. Maybe I need to make my argument better the next time. But if people are making decisions based on lies and disinformation, this, this is not the way forward, and we're not going to get anywhere like that. And so for me, that collaboration, bringing people together who have different points of views, but in the spirit of finding the truth together, is really important. Another huge value for us is diversity, uh, and not in a politically correct way. That isn't what it's about at all. Diversity is about, Wikipedia is, the, the original vision for Wikipedia is for all of us to imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. That means we're inherently global, we're inherently multilingual. As you saw in the video, we have volunteers all around the world, all working together. This is crucially important to us, and it's important to us uh, for linguistic diversity, but it's also important to us for the quality of the content. If we don't hear from every voice, we don't hear from people who have interests that are different from ours, specialisms that are different from ours, we won't have a full picture of knowledge. And there are many, many different people in the world, many different ideas and many different things that have to happen and come together. The concept of uh, Wiki Tribune is, uh, the, the business model is effectively very similar to Wikipedia. Uh, it's we're asking people to support us. So uh, the main thing we do is we ask people to become monthly supporters. Uh, if they can uh, you know, sign up to give $15 a month, then we use that money to hire journalists and obviously the tech people and things like that. So it's, it's relatively simple. The interesting thing about public interest journalism is that the paywall model doesn't really work very well. So if you've got a financial newspaper, uh, that paywall model works very well because if you, uh, you, know, you, you pay for access to the Wall Street Journal or the FT because you want to get access to unique business information that improves your career, improves your business, and so forth. And you don't really care if other people read it or not because, uh, you know, um, actually, I kind of hope they don't because now you're better informed and you're better off in your career and so forth. But, if you think about a public interest story, uh, so for example, the, uh, the Guardian reporting on the NSA spying on everyone, uh, I don't want to support the Guardian so that I get exclusive access to that information that's kept under wraps just for subscribers. I want to pay the Guardian to tell the world. Uh, and so when you've got public interest journalism, it's actually a benefit to not have a paywall so that people who are paying are saying, yeah, I'm paying you to go and get this information because I want you to educate the whole of the public, uh, that becomes a, an interesting proposition. Of course, the, the downside is nobody has to pay. Uh, and so maybe if you're cynical, you'll think, well, nobody will pay. They'll just free ride off of everyone else. That hasn't been our experience at Wikipedia. And I think uh, there's a lot of people out there who are happy to contribute to things that they think meaningful move the needle and make the world a better place. <laughs> I don't really get stressed, so I'm very relaxed all the time, and not much ever worries me or bothers me. I don't get angry. I'm just a very laid-back person. Um, you know, there's uh, quite a large number of people who I do admire uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, I think one who will come to mind for many, many people, not just me, is uh, Reid Hoffman of LinkedIn. Uh, is just a really wonderful guy and. Uh, Really, when I was raising money for Wikia, my for-profit company, he was there with lots of advice, uh, helping me deal with the venture capitalists. Uh, never really got anything in return for that. He's just a nice guy uh, and very helpful. And he, I think a lot of people in the industry would say that about him. So there's a lot of really uh, interesting people out there, but uh, he's one that comes to mind. The way I normally access my news is I, uh, I go to Google News and just read the front page of Google News. I actually do that logged out because I don't want them to customize it for me. Uh, one of the things that I think is a bit uh, dangerous in the current environment is all the algorithmic customization means we only see things we're already interested in and we're not exposed kind of randomly to new things and new ideas and challenges and things like that. So I like doing that. Of course, uh, like everybody, I'm, I've, I get 
follow links from Twitter, from my friends on Facebook, things like that. But I really do try to have a diverse uh, set of things that I read uh, because I think you know you, you don't want to be trapped in a bubble and not know what's going on in the world.